what I could say to you is um, Jose Riga came in um, and the team were in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup but in the background it was almost well once this run ends I'll be leaving we lost to Sheffield United I left the next day Riga came in team stayed up they're always going to stay up always going to stay up they're strong enough good enough and, and great they stayed up and Riga left Bob Peters came in from Belgium he's managed one of his teams before he left Guy Luzon came in he left But we've, we've had five managers in that time. Yes, that seems a little bit excessive by any standards. Excuse me? It seems excessive by any standards to go through five managers in two years. Yeah, but uh, nevertheless, they prove to be right, the right decision every time. Have they? Because okay. we improved all, always our, 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 our ranking and our results. Uh, I know not all the, those fans are, are represent the, the majority. It was only 2% of the people that were in the ground that were outside. And, and my proposition would be a unique kind of real football kind of um, fan experience. Uh, and see the hopefully the next stars of, of the of the Premier League, which we will have a play um, for Charlton in the first team, and then probably sell on to the Premier League. You're, you're uh, fans don't see themselves as customers, right. uh, and so whenever I now get very friendly emails from fans, they say, "Get out of our club." So it's not the, the shareholders' club. Um, I think it's quite funny because they say they pay. Obviously, the ticketing system is one third of our revenue stream. Um, but they, they go to their restaurants with their family every week and they go to the cinema, but if they're not satisfied with the, with the product, will they go and scream to the people in charge of it? No, they don't, <laughs> but they do it with a football club and that's very weird because they feel a sense of ownership of a football club and that's a really difficult balance is how you try to engage with fans and make them incorporate into, into the, some decisions of the club, but I, I think it's... It, I mean, in the end, the bill is paid by somebody else, so he should have the final say. There was an interview you gave, um, I can't remember where it was, but you'll know. Dublin. Where you described Charlton supporters as weird. Okay. Right. I, wasn't, I, I wasn't over happy about that when I read it. I, have, you, have you seen the interview? No, no, I haven't. That's Who what I'm asking. Have seen the interview? Have I said Charlton fans are weird? No, I think what you. I, I can I can read because I I thought you were going to ask this question. What are you because talking I, about? Me? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're unpredictable in the questions that you raise here. You're, you're no, lovely, Sid. Not weird. If, if I if I can can just say because a lot of people formed their opinion on something <coughs> they hasn't they haven't yeah. seen, and I think there has been some genuine misinterpretation on what I said. So I said I didn't say that fans are customers. I said. I think the difference is also that fans don't see themselves as customers. And then I go on, and I didn't say that fans were weird. What I said was, if, if they, the fans, are, aren't satisfied with the product, they will go and scream to the people in charge of it. No, they don't, but they will do it with a football club. And isn't that weird? I meant, I, I, and that's very weird. And I said, that's very unique for football. I didn't talk about the fans. I said the fact that fans, are so passionate uh, by the club or by, by, by the brand. That's the, the weird thing about football. That's the unique thing about football. That was what I was trying to say. And, and so I've been quoted in the press and I deliberately didn't say anything because I, I don't want to go into a cat fight and, and always try to justify what I said. But if you really go to the interview, it's not what I said. And I, I, we have a transcription, I can send it to everybody. It's not what I said. It's not I mean, the, the video's out there for people to watch as well. I mean, I think, I think what you actually said was that there was 
um, and obviously you have it verbatim there, but you, you said they, they feel a sense of ownership, which is weird. Um, and you then said, you know, of course it's the stakeholders club, they expect, they only pay a third of income into the club, which I, I think is arguable anyway. No. Um, and, um, uh, and then went on to say it was the, it's the stakeholders club and, and, uh, and so on. And I think it's that actually that's, that's kind of being described as customers um, and, compared, no, no, and, I, compared to, and compared to a cinema or a restaurant, I think is unfortunate. No, I, I, I said the comparison. The I said that I, I said you could compare it, but that's not the thing. The thing is that you, football is unique in that sense, and that's what I meant. And, and whoever watches the video, and I invite you to watch it, make up your mind when you see the video. But don't uh, read lazy journalist comments uh, that, that didn't do their homework. No, I'd agree, I'd agree with that, and I, I have seen the video, and I have to say that, that my perception was that um, that you were being a little critical of, of supporters, and, and that you were just you were indeed describing it as being a bit unusual, or maybe the context was slightly different. But I think there's a, uh, I've said this to you before, but I think you know you, the, the words that you use are, are your responsibility, and that means that when you say certain things that are going to be received by chance supporters, that needs to be kept to the forefront of the mind. And I think in this case, the words that you used are unfortunate. Whether you intended it in a different way, I think on this occasion the words at best are ambiguous. And I think Can actually. Can I ask you a question, please, Richard? Of is it not also the responsibility of the person who's going to make an accusation to actually make sure that they have got what they're saying 100% correct? What? Because <coughs> our boss hasn't called supporters well, customers. Well, let, let, no, 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 please let me finish. She hasn't called supporters customers. She actually has said football, you know, they're. For football supporters, and all the years I've been in football, are unique because they have such pride and passion about their club. And it's very true. I think we all do. If we purchase something, we don't. If we weren't, if we weren't, if we weren't, if we weren't satisfied with it, football supporters just take on, on a different persona than if they went to dinner and weren't satisfied with it. Football supporters are, and they're, they're a unique in a good way because they are so passionate. Oh, and I think if someone's going to make an accusation against someone about what you cause or what you don't, I think you, you would need to get the information correct first. I believe my boss has been misquoted. She has been falsely accused. And even though you say you've seen it, but you're still saying she said this, but she hasn't. I hasn't. And I'm going to tell you. I think it's wrong that I have to defend my boss and something that's quite, quite. So, let me let me ask you. Let me ask you in this way. Um, I think that um, it is not the responsibility of the recipient to to make sure that they have understood the communication. If I make it is the finish. It is the responsibility of the communicator to make sure that what they're communicating is received clearly. If no, that's all I will say. Okay. So, the person misinterpretate, misinterpretates what someone says. I make sure if I go up to you and say, Richard, you said this, I'm going to make sure what I say is correct before I make that accusation. No, quite right, but I have to say, I, I, have to say I came yet. out of watching that video with a similar impression to, to yeah. the, what's been expressed yeah. and elsewhere. I, I, I agree to some extent that um, social media does carry a certain degree of of getting carried away with itself in all kinds of ways, yeah. and certain things stick which haven't necessarily been accurately, um, accurately interpreted. Well, of course, yeah. and we, we will talk about that this afternoon as well. But in, in um, the, year, the year I've been here, but no minds of football, that lady there is probably one of the most passionate and convicted people I've ever worked for, and I'm, I've never met someone who is so open to sit down with supporters and fact, and just discuss absolutely everything. Well, that's, that's, I'm, I'm, that's not, I'm not here to question. I'm not here to question. I'm not here to question that, Maddie. I'm, all I'm saying is, is that lots of people have seen the video, and lots of people have formed similar opinions. That's all I'm saying. Well, so in the room, know, only you the have context, seen the video. No. In the room, I've yeah. seen the video. Yeah. Let, let's, let, sorry, people. Let's uh, draw a line under that, Mandy. My first meeting with him and the previous owner. I sat there in the boardroom and thought, I don't think I'll be here too long. Why is that? Because straight away, he said to me, you need a new goalkeeper. This is uh, the first, first meeting? Yes. Okay. Uh, so we're going through the, the, the squad. Um, I knew that there, there was a network of clubs that he owned. 
Um, he's earned his money, and rightly so, in the business that he's done. He's been very successful, no problem with that. But straight away, he was saying, we've seen the players, and you need a new goalkeeper. Um, you need a, a, a striker better than Kumorgan, who's one of the best players I've ever managed. Um, you need a new full-back, and I Chris Solly, uh, one of the best right-backs, and Royce Wiggins. Um, and he just said, we've got players that will be better than them. I said, you've got to recognise and appreciate how tough the championship is. And then I had Roland saying to me, they're not good enough. And I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking... Have you had that before, when an owner of a club has told you how to run it? No, 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 no. Owners are very, very important to clubs. They come in all shapes and sizes, from all different backgrounds, primarily from... They have businesses that they're very successful at, and they either love the club, like uh, the, the owner at, at Huddersfield, Dean, um, or they buy in and they want to do well and they ultimately want to get into the Premier League. Mm -hmm. Fine, no problem. They want to throw their money at it, and fair enough, they've been successful, they got the money to do it. But Roland straight away said to me, we need these players and that players. I said, well, as long as I've seen them, I know what they're about, and I have the characteristics and the character I feel is right for this club, because it's a bit of a one-off club, a bit special mm. with what they've been through, then fine. But then I'll go to training, I'll get a phone call, oh, there's a goalkeeper downstairs. And I'm thinking, well, I didn't know he was coming in. I had to go down and go, oh, good to see you, great. But I'm thinking, I don't know who you are. So all of a sudden, you have to play him. But then well, I've why got... do you have to play him? Because he wants them to play, because they've come over to play. They've obviously been told, it's never ever the player's fault. I used to of say to the stuff, it's not their fault. They're playing in Belgium or they're playing in Hungary, and they've been told, go over to England, which they obviously feel is a great opportunity, you're going to play. Did Roland ever tell you to pick players, or ever tell you to pick a formation, or ever tell you to make substitutions? At yeah, time? not substitutions. But he told you um, to pick a certain player? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, and... How often time, did that happen? A lot of time I said no. But the other time you said yes? No, I never ever said yes. I would always choose the team I felt was right for that game. If you, you, you get compromised, you cannot do that as a manager. You have to have belief in the players, the 11, the 18 that you choose. And it will work for you sometimes and other times it won't. But for Roland to say to me after I've played a game and we, we, we lost the game, say... Why didn't you play him? Why didn't you? I'm saying, well, he's not up to speed. He's not good enough. He's not right for the championship. Now, at the time, it was quite a brave move, but I didn't want to compromise my own principles mm. um, because then I'm not manager of the team. Your um, situation's becoming un untenable here. Well, absolutely. So I knew. I knew straight away. Uh, over what period of time is this? I had two months. So January okay. came in. I left in March of 2014. And I just knew if... This is the way they're going to work. It will not work at this club, for sure. Watford have done it, but they've done it in a different way. They really have done it, and do they've been smart how they've done it. Do you think he had a hidden agenda? Do you think he wanted to get rid of you, so we got on your back? Well, yeah, because... Maybe from day one? Possibly. Possibly. Uh, only he could answer that. Going back to uh, the, the, pl the playing side, um, when Chris Powell was dismissed, the uh, reasons given were that he was failing to agree with the club's footballing strategy, I think was the, uh, the, uh, one of the reasons I, uh, that I read. Um, he, sp he stated that uh, he was not happy with a situation where he was being, players were being sent over and he was being told to play them. Mm. And in particular, the, the goalkeeper who um, I think most people accept was perhaps, certainly at that stage in his career, wasn't good enough to be in the side. Mm -hmm. um, are you able to assure us that our current interim manager and uh, those that have come before and those that will presumably follow are not uh, subject to anything of the sort and are they allowed to pick the side without any interference from abroad or from anywhere else? No, I think it's a, it's a bit, uh, I mean, 
out of reality this comment uh, obviously whatever coach that came in was uh, in charge of its team and, and is able to pick the players and, and uh, especially Mr. Duchatelet really recognizes the work the most important work and the, the way you choose your team for the game on Saturday is based on what a manager sees during the week every day they work with the players and I think we had some examples this week uh, this se season as well if the players don't perform uh, well during the week on a training they might end up on the bench while everybody of the fans and, and maybe also Mr. Duchatelet would say why did, why doesn't he start in, in the in the first 11 um, so uh, I've been I think there have been enough of examples like that and um, and I can assure you that, that that's not the case it, it, it's it's things like that which cause people to be unhappy and it's good that you know, if that isn't happening, that it's made very clear that it's not happening. It's it's for sure not <laughs> okay. not happening. And uh, I, I always say to people is to put things into perspective what other people say in the press, uh, because it's mostly concerns ex-employees that are dismissed. Uh, and so at a certain point in time, you need to to realize that people might people might be saying certain things for certain reasons. Okay, but it's still good that that's clarified for everybody. The only thing I will ask is why doesn't, bearing in mind the state of the club at the moment, why doesn't the owner come and watch a game? Because he watches all the games. He yeah, watches all the games. I understand that. It says on there that he watches all games wherever he is in the world. But he also knows, I'm sure, that the fans are not happy. He's very much aware of so that. So why doesn't he make an appearance? Because uh, that's the way he is very limited in time, and I have explained it before. Is that most but of but he's investing a lot of money. But that it's not because you're not. It, the whole point is that uh, the fans feel he's emotionally disconnected from the club, and I, I said it uh, to fans on Saturday when we were losing six 0 at home. I probably had 20, 30 phone calls from him. That's not somebody because he's not physically at the game seeing us lose six 0 That's not somebody who's not concerned about the club. It is part of the communications picture, though, I think, isn't it? Because it provides a perception of, of a detachment right. which you say isn't there. I mean, if you just came for one game a season, it would make a difference. But he came last season to a game to the season. For the moment, his agenda, whenever he visited the club this year, it hasn't fallen uh, with a, ga a home game, mostly on a, t uh, on a Tuesday, because he's mostly here over uh, during the week, not in the weekends. So whenever his next uh, visit will be, if it happens to be during a Tuesday game, we'll accommodate it, like we've always done in the past. I, I, I have no issue with that, but I suspect that fans would um, would see that, um, would associate the lack of presence and the lack of willingness to make time for one of those particular games uh, as equating to a, a detachment. I think there's probably other examples of football clubs where the owner doesn't... But we're not interested in that. We're not interested in that. Exactly. No, but it's not relevant. It's we're, we're interested in Trump. I understand that, but to sort of, you know, Ron doesn't come to a game, it's, he's, he's unique in that fact. He's not unique in that fact as an owner of a football club. Well, I think Charles is a unique football club. So no, very weird football club. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Uh, who is currently responsible for the key communications in the club and are there plans to appoint a new head of communications? Yes, uh, so uh, uh, obviously the team is without a head of communications. A new head of communications will come in on the 1st of February. Um, we've been struggling to, to fill that position uh, for a while. Uh, but obviously uh, Oli and uh, Oli Groom and his team uh, are doing the best that they can. But uh, I asked them also to do lots of things. Uh, so don't always uh, blame them, but also blame me. Uh, we're very demanding uh, with them. Uh, but uh, normally there will be a head of communications arriving uh, early, early next year.
your likeness on the little Barney offer of some of you offering to invest in the club? Yes, uh, I mean, we, we are planted as well in the communication. Uh, like any other championship club, uh, we get approached by uh, takeover proposals all the time, but the club is not for sale. Well, you can see why the fans are angry. The, uh, you know, it's rumoured that um, they were willing to invest uh, quite a bit of money in, in, in the club, and sort of uh, the way things are going at the moment, you can see why the fans are angry. That you wouldn't well, even speak I, I think to we them. just established. Uh, we just established that the investment in the club the last past years, 25 million pounds, has never been bigger, uh, and 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 we feel we're investing in the right kind of uh, things, and 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 the club basically is not for sale. Does that mean that every investor gets treated the same way that Mr. Varney was treated? To to come to come to the Varney stuff is is if you read the emails that he he so kindly published. Um, which were actually private and confidential and should have actually, with our permission, been published to, to just clarify this. Um, when he sent us an email, it specifically said, I would like to uh, discuss with you an investment proposal. Huh? Specifically, if we're going into the semantics and if my words are being treated uh, like in Dublin, we can do the same way. So, in the communication, was never clear what his investment proposal was. It was only when it was published in the Sun magazine of the club. I read it on the website. Exactly. It, it, when it, the emails were published and he gave context to the emails that he had a proposal to take over the club. It wasn't clear at that point in time that it was there. And, and all of this to say is that we get approached by people all the time and there's no matter in meeting with people if the club is not for sale. But that, you just said um, that you weren't aware what the investment proposal was. Um, so to dismiss it as um, of something you're not you're not willing to entertain seems a little bit odd. I and mean, wouldn't it have been wise just to find out? But we initially set up meetings, but due to his unavailability and my unavailability, we postponed, we postponed, and then uh, there were emails um, uh, that um, he wasn't happy with the with the way things were going, and then we just hold off. I'd like to talk, if I may, um, about the match day programme. I'd like to start by congratulating those who put it together, Ollie and his team, for the fact that I believe that they won an award or run us up in an award for the best programme, which is very creditable. But I have a concern. I hear a rumours. There's lots of rumours flying around these days. I hear a rumour that you are planning to discontinue the programme and just hand out a team sheet. Is there any truth in that? <laughs> Yeah, it's, from, yeah it's, it's, uh, it's the rumours that we've been dealing with probably for a while now and it's probably why we also deal with uh, some paper handing out to try to rectify those kind of rumours. I, I think uh, uh, we, um, like you uh, point out uh, correctly, is, is the programme has been uh, probably increased in, in quality the last year and everybody can see the, the efforts that Oli and his team has made. Uh, and uh, we're just uh, looking for them to, to, to continue their efforts like this. Uh, and, and now with uh, hopefully our new head of communications, uh, it will be easier for them as well to allocate their time more, more efficiently to the program and to the rest of the communication that needs to happen from the club's perspective. So there is no plan in, in your mind to... It, I, it's like you said, it was a rumor. Thank you. With regards to the, um, the redevelopment plans for the Jimmy Seed stand, um, one of the uh, things that's been reported has been that uh, there were plans to include some residential development within the stand. Would you like to comment on that? I'll, I'll comment on that because it's the, um, we're, we're, uh, we've looked at the uh, South Stand. Um, the South Stand. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Seed. Seed um, <laughs> apologies, apologies. Jimmy Seed and I'll, 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 I'll make sure I refer to Jimmy Seed. Um, Jimmy C. Sand um, is in, it requires refurbishment um, and there's uh, just initial um, provisional um, looking at the uh, how, how that could happen, where do we go about it. Um, we're at no point know if it's going to include residential 
um, is we're looking at how, how we could enhance the stadium by stress. It is at the uh, in provisional initial stages. Um, our, our focus from a redevelopment is, is on the training ground. So to come back to that question, just does uh, there's a question I asked was uh, whether there are the, 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 the flats have been part of the discussions at the, at the moment. Is that or no? no sure we, we, we haven't had any discussions about flats. No discussions about flats. We've had, Jimmy we've had, we've had no, no discussions with anybody about, about flats. We've looked at we've looked at provisional kind of designs and how could work. What sort of capacity are you looking at? For for Jimmy Seed's stand, I know if, you're only at the provisional stage. If, if you're looking to enhance the overall stadium. I think, I think the concern of supporters is we've seen a strip of land over, in that, over that side which was sold by a previous regime. Um, and I think the concern is that if we were to get back, when we get back in the Premier League and things are going well again and we reach a point where we want to think about increasing the capacity of the stadium, which we were getting to that point in the previous uh, occasion. Um, we don't want to see the club making a short-term decision now, sticking up a block of flats or something which is going to mean when the time comes we can't increase the, increase the ground. That's what people's fear is. Not that we're worried about it being flats. What we're worried about is that the decision made mustn't affect the long term. I think, uh, if anything, what we're trying to communicate to the fans is we all are about long term planning uh, well, and the training ground development is also about that and we will go the same way about uh, uh, the, the, the stadium. Well, Obviously, that's, we're not, we're, that's, that's part of our strategy. But that's why it's important that we ask these questions and you answer them because but people are, answer. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's important that we're ask, asking them because people are getting all sorts of other ideas and if you're saying that they're wrongly and, and they're worrying about things unnecessarily, and then that's good that we get that. <coughs> if we, um, we looked at the, um, I've seen and discussed with an internal team um, about there was some previous plans um, for the Jimmy C stand, um, and there was provision, um, previous uh, plans for East stand. Um, and the pictures and visuals I've seen of those included, uh, I believe the planning permission, um, the previous planning, planning permission that was, was given um, by Greenwich Council was for Flats in the um, in the east end, um, and I've, I've seen those drawings. We've, we've got copies of those drawings. Yeah, um, I think it was nine nine apartments. Wasn't it? Yeah, nine apartments, and, and there's, there's drawings. We've got drawings upstairs that shows um, apartments in the um, in the Jimmy Seat um, stand on, on the side, and I don't believe those um, they got through. That, those got through planning. But um, so we're, we're aware that um, of previous kind of ideas about how you could develop the stand. Um, and when you look at um, kind of consider options, you look at other other venues um, that potentially have ways of, um, of, of, the, of enhancing what you've already got. Thank you. Were those plans um, as part of this stadium, as part of the stands, or was it um, sort of complementary development um, um, which, to the which, eastern which, which, south? Which the ones that you said you, you have drawings for? Um, I saw a picture. I saw was um, there was a, a uh, you had the south stand. It was on a um, Jimmy C stand on a double tier, yeah. um, and there was a building um, to the side of it, which was from, from the, what I could view was a combination of um, apartments and um, up, up in Lansdowne Mews, or actually attached yeah. to the stand. Yeah, correct. Lansdowne, 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 Lansdowne Mews. Lansdowne. Yeah. So that's a slightly different thing, isn't it? Because I think what we're hearing, and you've said you've not had those discussions yet, and I'm happy to accept that. But what we're hearing is that the there are plans for uh, residential um, accommodation within the, the Jimmy Seat stand replacement. Uh, uh, and if I could, if I could stru stress the complete accuracy, we've had some provisional looks at how we were looking at the um, through our long-term plans um, and with the club, and look, and we understand that the Jimmy Seat stand needs to, to be developed, and we're, we're looking at how could you develop it. Yeah, and as you said, that doesn't. It hasn't to date included any residential we, accommodation. The details, the, loads of things have been thrown on the table. We, we haven't taken this any further. It's just looking at ideas. Okay. So those ideas have come up, but you, there's no firm plans at the moment? There's no firm plans. Okay. The Player of the Year dinner at the end of the season. <coughs>
Two meetings ago, you said you were not happy the way it had been and you had plans to introduce something else. When we had the last meeting, you said you hadn't given any thought to something else since you first mentioned it. And we're now at a point, bearing in mind we're at the end of January, that we've got to either go with the player of the year dinner or not. So I need to know what's happening as far as your plans are concerned, please. Yes, uh, we, we had an internal discussion as well with Fizz about it and uh, we think uh, it should be a joint kind of thing probably with the fans together with our community trust uh, because they, they are <coughs> quite uh, helpful in that respect and they, for them it will be also a fundraising opportunity together, the drawing upon the good relationships that they have. Uh, uh, we think it can, can be a successful event. Uh, and I think uh, Fizz <coughs> would like to take up this matter together with you and the trust uh, to see how we can organize uh, that event. The only thing that I would say, I would just say from a perspective from the footballing side, there, there appears still to be a preference to, that it should be held uh, on the Saturday. Uh, a preference by whom? Yeah. Not really by the fans. On the football side. On the football side. What, the, the, what do you mean the players? So, but uh, take this matter, well, of, I, take this well, matter offline uh, together with FIS and yeah. the Community Trust. Well. Five years ago, the fans forum, very few people in this room were here then. Vernon was perhaps one of them. Can't think anybody else, really. Um, oh, Sid. Um, we were asked, the fans forum were asked to take over running the dinner, which had previously been run by the supporters club as a supporters club as such ceased to exist. And we've run it for five years. Um, what you're envisaging is something quite different. Because you're talking about something on the Saturday. Potentially, yeah. It may, yeah. it may or may not be. I mean, we want to talk to you. We want to improve the trust in those discussions as well. Well, and when you say talk to me, you mean talk to the fans forum? Well, fa yeah, yeah, fans forum. Um, I personally won't be interested in doing anything on the Saturday. No. Um, that's just a personal thing. So I think you need to work out who is going to be the person who's going to be organising this thing. Um, I have no interest in that. Well, from the fans forum perspective, well, then, you mean? from whoever's going to organise it. The fans forum have organised it. Yeah. Gene and I have done that. But you're saying that you don't want anything to do with it this on a Saturday, yeah? No. I think Ian's but saying he's also talking on behalf of a lot of us that have been there. That's, that's what I'm asking the question. I'm talking on behalf of me. I'm talking yeah. on behalf of me. Yeah, and me. Okay. Other people here may wish to take it up. I've done, I've done it with Gene for five years. If you were going to carry on with the same thing on the Sunday, then yeah, I'd probably be happy to carry on with it. But you know, you're very welcome to change it however you wish. But I, I personally don't think I want to know anything on the Saturday. I don't, I don't see how that can work in practical terms, um, and it doesn't appeal to me in the slightest. But that's just a personal view. But I would say the people who come on the Sunday, I haven't found one single person who wants to do something on the Saturday. So I think you're going to you're going to run into well I'm not saying there's always somebody who will do it but first of all you're going to find somebody to organise it. But that, like I said, I, it's a suggestion, yeah. and the only thing is take it offline and discuss it to, together. Okay. When and with who? Well, I said to with Felicity together with the community trust. Um, with who? Matt Parrish from the community trust. Well, I would suggest that's not a wide enough scope. From the from our well, side. Well, we're, we're, certainly no. look, we're, we're, we're certainly look for input um, from fans, of course. Um, but if you're not interested in, in doing anything on the Saturday, then it would be good to understand those reasons why and and talk about the format and how what what aspects of that won't work. But whether right now in this moment is the, is the best way to do that, or whether it would be worth putting together a meeting to get your input specifically on that matter. The answer is probably tradition. Yeah, People are resistant to change. You're, you're taking something, this was an event run by the fans for the fans. Yes, of course it could only work if the players came and the manager, but going back over 30 or 40 years, it has been traditional that on the Sunday at the, after the last game, the manager would come and the majority of the players would be there and it would be a sort of semi-formal occasion. The same format has been followed all that time. But it wasn't the club organising it, it was the fans who organised it. What you're now suggesting is it becomes a combination of the fans and the community trust organising it, which is a quite quite a different thing, isn't it? One of the major um, uh, 
influences in, in suggesting the Saturday as an idea is that more fans might be able to get Sorry to interrupt you, but I think it's much less likely to appeal to fans. I mean, nobody wants to come to a football match dressed in a manner to go to a dinner afterwards. And from people like myself, I, I mean, I'm coming up from West Sussex, so I'm, I can do the Valley Express on a Saturday, I can come up to Sunday for Player of the Year. I can't do them both on the same day, and I don't want to come up to Player of the Year I don't want to come up to the game dressed for Player of the Year. What, what am I supposed to do? Drive home and pick my girlfriend up and then come back again? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Well, the, these are all in, the kind of input that we need in order to make a final decision. Well, with respect, we gave this input to two to meetings ago. But now we need to, to tie down the final details and actually, Quickly. as you say, it's yeah. general. Could I, could I respectfully ask, Ian, if you've got the time, could you um, liaise with Fizz and... Um, Whoever else is involved in this, um, and and come try and resolve it that way. If you it can't keep going on, mm. you know, and that's why the what, fans what is now. That, what, what is what do you think their agenda or objectives are for for Charlton? That's the that's the question that I'd love to get an answer to because I cannot see. What the end game is, if it's going to be Premier League, or add some some stability to the football club, whether that's in management or whether that's in a squad, a consistent group of players, because players are just coming in and going. What worrying me for the fans is that it, he appears to be going nowhere. He he looks like he's in for the long haul. He he's very brazen about it. Yeah. You know, I've seen some of the stuff on the, some channel fans have sent me some stuff on YouTube and, and some of the clips of yeah. um, their protests. Yeah, they're not just that, but also the, the interviews that they've done on the stage with one of his uh, chief execs, a, a female. Oh, yeah, Catherine, yeah. Yeah, um, and it looks like they're there for the, the, the long haul. Um, yeah. They don't look like they're going anywhere, so it's a stalemate between the fans <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the owners. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I suppose in one way I can say I knew it was coming. But I can't be that clever and say I, I knew this was going to happen with a, a manager. Oh, but absolutely. Chris, the thing surprised. I can never understand with, with businessmen investing in football clubs is the last thing they want to do is lose money. Yeah, it's, big, and, it's and beyond if they, me. If they treat a club like this, I mean, you look at Charlton at the moment, they're in the bottom three, they're gold mm. I think I'm right in saying it's the worst in the league. It's minus 30. In all four leagues. Is it all four leagues? Yeah. They're minus 32, I think. I yeah. saw it earlier on. Yeah. They're going to keep losing money unless yeah. they stop this problem. And if they sell the club, they'll lose money on how much they paid for it and so on. It's just a never-ending spiral downwards for them. Mm. So there must be, they're not stupid. You don't become a wealthy businessman by being stupid. There must be a part of... But football does this to owners. They, they can be successful businessmen. They go into football and their brains turn to mush. Because, because they think they, they can... They think they can the run football clubs like business. Football, football clubs are unique businesses. Absolutely. They, they are run in different... They're, they're, the, the, pay, the, the fans, of course, you know... It, well, they call them the customers. customers. That's right, they call them customers, yeah. right? And yeah. that, in a very, in a very, if you want, you know, anyone doesn't know what's going on at Charlton, they call the fans customers. That's that sums up how they see their running of a football club. It's yeah. not a shop. As someone put on YouTube, it's not a restaurant, but that's how they see it. And they don't, they don't, they don't grasp how important fans are. Then they are the lifeblood to, to a football club, and they, they just don't. And until they grasp that or understand that, this situation situation is not going to change. No, it's not going to change. They're only four points away from safety, so actually, they've still got a bit of time well, to rescue it. Five, their goal difference is that. Well, five, yeah, <laughs> you're right. It could be six. Yeah. <laughs> Minus <laughs> 32. But there, there, there's a massive problem there, because if you buy into a club, like Man Manchester City, they bought into the club, I know it's the money-wise is way beyond, but they bought into the club, they bought into what it means, what main road meant, Blue Moon, they bought into it. You have to do that. You have to understand the psyche of that club and then go with it and bring your expertise, bring it financially as well, but buy into what the club's about. I bet they don't know that the club formed a political party to get mm. back to the valley. But you should know that and know what it means to th those supporters. They love that club. It is quite unique. And maybe I'm saying that because I've, I've been there four times. I keep going, leaving, coming back, leaving, would coming you, back. Would, but, you, would you go back? Um, if Rick walked out tomorrow and they phoned you up? That won't happen. If it did? It won't, and... Okay, it won't if really. he went on Saturday morning? 
Did you go back? I'm, I'm going Derby tomorrow, so uh, I can't go tomorrow. No, I'm, uh... If he stayed there, if, if Roland stayed there, would you? He, he, no, it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen. What? Why haven't they hired a, a British manager? That That's beyond me. They could win the fans, or a lot of the fans over, by doing that, by saying, you're actually employing someone who has knowledge of the league, not the players, coming yes. in and saying, OK, we'll, we'll just try and play and we'll get it. The stats of foreign managers getting teams out of the championship is ridiculous. I think it's improved of late. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 it's so difficult. A tough league anyway, whether you know it or not, but the British managers tend to get teams out of that division yeah. up into the... Yeah, they do. We're, we're going to talk more with Chris Powell in just a moment right here.